Sunny fam, I am your Sunny trainer, Sydney. Welcome back. Today I have a 30 minute walk for heart health. If you guys are apprehensive about doing a cardio workout, maybe you haven't done a workout in a while, or you just have never done structured cardio, this is gonna be the perfect workout for you because it's effort-based and the class should feel super comfortable and really accessible. And if you're advanced, because it is effort-based, that means that this class is for you too. Because it is effort-based, we're kind of going to be focusing on one specific effort today because that's the perfect like Goldilocks sweet zone to lock in for heart health. We're gonna be working in a 60 to 75% range. Now, if you guys don't have a treadmill, feel free to hop in on a rower, elliptical, bike, whatever you have at home because it's effort-based. Just listen to whatever I'm saying, internalize it and try to adjust for whatever you're working with. All right, so let's get started. If you guys are on a treadmill, we're gonna press start. Go ahead and put on your safety clip. And once the treadmill gets rolling, we're gonna bring it up to a speed of three miles per hour. Now let's talk about the speed a little bit today. So I'm gonna set my treadmill to three miles per hour and I'm gonna leave it here for the entirety of today's workout. So I want you to find a speed that's right for you, right? Three miles per hour is just a suggestion and I need you to make a decision about where you're gonna be based on where you are right now. So maybe you're not quite up to three miles per hour yet. Maybe you wanna walk a little bit faster. Really, wherever we wanna be is what's going to make our body feel right for the specific zone that I was talking about that we're trying to hit, which is a 60 to 75%. So our pace should feel brisk but it should feel comfortable and something that we can maintain for a full 30 minutes. Also, a good way to check in if it's the right pace for you is let's say you and I were having a conversation. You should be able to talk to me in almost full sentences. Maybe you take a little breath in between every few words, but if you have to take a breath in between like every single word, then you're going too hard. So. If you wanna ramble at home on your treadmill just to test it out, feel free, that's fine. <laughs> if not, it's cool, <laughs> I get it. <sighs> nice deep breath. And like I was saying, start to tune into your body. How are you feeling? How is this pace feeling? If we need to adjust, that's fine. We're gonna be here for about eight minutes warming up, slowly increasing our incline. And again, that incline is totally up to you. So if you feel like this is already enough of a challenge today, I'm just gonna ask you to stay right here and walk with me for 30 whole minutes. If it's not, and we need a little bit more of a challenge to get in that right heart rate zone, I'm gonna ask you to bring your incline up with me. All right. Nice deep breath. And let's bring the incline up. If you are gonna be bringing your incline up today, let's bring it up to at least a three. And as it starts to come up, notice the backside of your body is starting to work a little bit harder. You might be feeling it already. Your glutes and hamstrings and calves should all be firing on. That's the wonderful thing about walking on an incline. I love that about incline walking because it really gets into those big muscles in the backside of your body and it makes your body work harder, right? So at the end of the workout, we feel like we did a lot more work because we did. Now, as you're walking on an incline, I really want you to focus in on your form. Our form becomes really important when we start adding incline because a lot of times at the gym, I'll see people holding onto the handlebars or to adjust to the incline, they'll kind of shift back and that's really bad on your lower back. So where I want you to be on this incline walk, you should be firmly planting your feet with each step, toes should be facing forward and your knees should be tracking straight forward as well, right? None of the side to side movement, we're focusing all of our energy moving with us as we're trying to move forward. Your hips should also be coming with you so you shouldn't be sticking out your butt. Tuck it in and tuck that pelvis with you 
and keep it as an engaged part of your core, right? So your body is this nice straight line. Your shoulders should be down and back, chest proud. And then feel this subtle lift from your upper body, almost as if there's a string from the top of your head pulling you up. Isn't that so nice? Like you just feel so like, <laughs> all collected and ready to go. Okay team, we're gonna add on a little bit more incline here. If you are coming with me, we're going to an incline of six. Again, remember these adjustments are just a suggestion and it's up to you to make a decision. So connect with your body, see how it's feeling and adjust wherever needed. If that's your speed, if that's your incline, fine. But we have about four more minutes left in our warm up, So I want you to start really tuning in to where that sweet spot is for your body because once we hit the eight minute mark, I want you to commit to a specific speed and a specific incline, and we're gonna hold that for the rest of the workout, okay? This workout is all about getting to learn and understand your body a little bit better and really sticking to our guns and doing what we set out to do. This workout is super intentional, right? And oftentimes with like steady state cardio, like, it's boring, right? Like, I mean, it's just something that you usually like throw your speed on, throw your incline on, and you just kind of forget about it. But really this is supposed to be a super intentional workout, right? Like we're moving in a way that supports our body. We're getting our heart rate working, which is so important for our heart health. So be intentional with it, right? Like really tune into your body and let's give it what it needs today. All right, second to last ad coming up. If you think you have a little bit more in the tank, let's add a little bit more incline. I'm gonna take mine up to an incline of seven, planning to put on one more level of incline at the end of the next two minutes and lock in at a speed of three and an incline of eight for the rest of the workout. Now, no need to compare to me. If you're not there yet, it's totally fine. Do whatever speed and incline works for you, right? Because we're focused on improving your heart health. This workout is all about you, not about me. So no comparison. It's just you and the treadmill. Nice deep breath. As we add that incline, you might feel that your form is starting to shift a little bit. Let's lock it back in. Body is a nice straight line and we're walking normally. I almost like to think of the way that I walk on the treadmill at an incline is the same as I would be walking if I was hiking on a trail, right? Like you're not gonna be hiking like this. <laughs> that would be terrible. So focus in, keep that core nice and tight. We wanna protect our back, we wanna protect our joints because we wanna be able to keep coming back to our treadmill and doing these workouts because working out for your heart health is extremely important. And the most important part is that we're doing it consistently, right? Like one workout, this workout right here, isn't really gonna help you. Like it's a great start, but we really wanna be taking our bodies so that we can continually be coming back to this. <sighs> nice deep breath. If you want it, this is a really good chance to grab some water, towel off in 30 seconds. We're gonna be locking in that speed and that incline. So start thinking about it and let's get there when you're ready. All right, one more incline for me. Whoop, whoop. This is a little bit lower of an incline than I usually use when I'm working out at home. Just because I'm talking so much today, but I can already feel it, right? Like, as I'm talking to you guys. So this, all of this talking is a good test for me too. It's a good test of where I should be and where my zone truly is, which is really cool. All right, team, we're locked in. We're here for a full 22 minutes. 
So kind of settle into this pace. Get your cadence going nice and natural. If you were on your own, this is kind of that time where like you've been intentional, you've figured out what you're doing, you've listened to your body. Maybe you read a book, maybe you listen to an audiobook or a podcast. That's what I love to do. Lately, I've been listening to Taylor Swift <laughs> because I got tickets to the Taylor Swift concert and I'm super stoked about it. They were really hard to get. <sighs> so I'm extremely excited. But I realized Taylor Swift has like 50 million albums and I thought I knew all the words to the Taylor Swift songs, but I realized I really only knew the words to the ones that were important to me. Like I kind of skipped over her phase that's like all of those slow songs like Evermore, is that what it's even called? Forevermore, something like that. <laughs> so I've been taking my zone two time, my steady state cardio here to learn my Taylor Swift songs. And I rock out and I sing along because honestly in the zone two, you should be able to sing, right? I mean, not comfortably, like you don't really want to, but if Taylor Swift is on, you're gonna sing and you're gonna dance. So I would encourage you when you do this on your own in the future, find something that's like really gonna make you wanna come back to this because as fun as this is, like it is fun, we're doing it together. But if you do it like frequently throughout the week, as you should, right? Our goal for heart health should be a minimum of 150 minutes of cardio exercise throughout the week, if it's moderate, which this is our moderate activity. So that kind of equals out to like five days a week, 30 minutes, which like that's kind of a lot, right? Like that adds up. So if you're on your treadmill doing this every single day, it can get kind of stale. So it's really important to find those things that you can latch onto and that make you excited to come back. So for me now, my zone two cardio is my Taylor Swift rockout zone and it's incredible. I love it so much. But we'll see, who knows? In the next few weeks, it might become something else, right? Maybe I'll go back to podcasting. It's a really good time to learn things. It's a really good space. Like, if you make it, if you make this steady state cardio your space for you and your day, it's like life changing. Like, who doesn't want space for themselves in their day? So make it about you, make it intentional. And I swear, you're gonna love it. And you're gonna keep coming back to it like I do because it just feels the best. How are we feeling? Let's check back in with our bodies. Where is our form? Are we planting those feet nice and firm? Are we pressed up too far against the front of our treadmill? Let yourself roll back a little bit. Keep that natural space. Is your core engaged? That's so important. As you think about your core, I want you to think too about how your obliques are helping to keep you nice and stable, right? Because as we walk, we shift from foot to foot. It's natural to want to go from side to side, but we're trying to move forward, right? So if you engage those obliques, they're gonna help you keep you locked in and make sure that you're moving forward instead of side to side. So let them do the work for you. Turn them on. And of course, posture. Friends, I feel like posture is always the first thing to go. Keep it locked in. Nice deep breath. And that's kind of what I do every time I do zone two cardio like this. You just have to come back to yourself every once in a while, right? Like it's totally natural to let your mind wander, to start thinking about other things, to even forget that you're on the treadmill in the first place, right? Like that's the magic of moving at this pace and the speed. The fact that you're able to give your brain to something else. But every once in a while, just come back, check in with where you're at and adjust as needed. And that goes for your zone too. I know I said that we were gonna lock in for the full 22 minutes, but if you find that you're working too hard or maybe you're not working hard enough, it's okay to adjust, right? We're constantly learning. So cue into those things. They mean something. 
And by responding to them, we give them power. And that's pretty cool. So do what you need to do. Nice deep breath. I kind of think of zone two cardio as like, it's a, kind of like a meditation. Like, have you guys ever done a breathing meditation where like you just are supposed to be focusing on your breathing, but naturally your mind starts to wander. And then after a while, you just acknowledge that that thought is there. You push it away and you focus back where you are for a few seconds, focus back in on that breath. You can do breathing meditation while you're doing zone two. I've totally done it before. But even if you aren't doing it, zone two is almost like a breathing meditation, but with your body, right? Which is really cool because I love moving my body and it just feels really good. So it's really cool to connect with your body in that way. Nice deep breath. Team, we're 15 minutes in, crushing it. We have 15 more minutes to go. I love it. And by now, you should definitely be feeling those glutes and hamstrings really working if you have the incline like me. And you should be into a good rhythm, right? When we first hop on our treadmill, we tend to get a little nervous, maybe a little breathy. Maybe you're questioning if you could get through the workout. But now we should be at this place where we feel confident, we feel good, and we know we're gonna make it through. That feeling is the best, right? 15 minutes to go, that's nothing. We've already done that. We know we can do that. So soak it in. All right, team, come back to your body once again. How are we doing? Speed check, incline check, breathing test, all the things. Are you breathing too heavy? It's okay if you are, right? There's no shame and if you're breathing too heavy, not hard enough, all of our bodies are differently. And this is your time, right? It's your time for you. And that's what's really important. So focus on yourself and give yourself permission to give your body what it needs right now in this moment. Okay, so let's talk about heart health a little bit. Yeah, cause like that's why we're here. <laughs> so this walk, if you guys are following along, it's a part of our heart health series. And really why we wanted to put this together is because your heart health is extremely important, right? It's a data point in your longevity. And the crazy thing is that by doing steady state cardio, just like this, a minimum of 150 minutes a week, you can improve your heart health. You can directly impact the health of your heart with something so simple, right? Like this isn't hard. All it requires is showing up for yourself. And it's pretty cool that we have something that's so accessible that can change our complete health. Doing something like this isn't just gonna improve your heart health. Exercise will improve your life in every single area. I mean, it's amazing that it improves your heart health, but it's even more impactful when we be believe and understand how much it truly affects. So that's super sweet. So this moderate cardio study show is something that you should be doing at least 80% of your cardio workouts here in this zone. The other 20%, if you're interested in getting into vigorous training, should be something vigorous like HIT or intervals. And that might come as a shock to most of you because if you're anything like me, I grew up doing track. I did HIT like every single day of the week. Turns out I was overtraining. What's new? Um, but basically what studies show is that this combination of 80% low to moderate intensity, 20% vigorous, is the perfect combination to optimize both recovery and performance. And I think that's really cool because it just sheds light on the fact that you really can't expect performance from your body unless you give it the time to recover. And this moderate training zone, it's so low impact on your body 
but you can really do it so many days a week without damaging your body or overperforming. And I think that's really cool and makes this specific type of exercise super approachable. I'm all for doing something that feels good on my body and feels good and doesn't feel that hard. Like that's a win for me. So I'm a big proponent of easy cardio exercise like this. And I feel like we don't talk about it enough, especially if you follow along with the Sunny Fit app or you do some of our other workouts on YouTube. Most of them are gonna be high intensity focused, right? Because that's the kind of work that you really need help with from a coach to narrow in on performance. But we don't often do this together. And I think it's really cool to normalize doing this together and normalize doing it more often. Because this is where you should truly be spending your time. All right, back to your body. Enough of my chit chat. <laughs> How is your body doing? How are we feeling? Check in once again. Is that nice little fishing line pulling you up towards the ceiling? Feel that nice little lift, nice and tall posture. You guys are crushing this. Great work. Now, if you're starting to feel a little bit of tightness in your lower back, this is kind of common if you haven't done incline walking before, go ahead and just take the incline off on your treadmill and maybe turn the speed up a little bit because when we're incline walking, it really requires a lot of work on the core. And if you aren't used to that amount of work, you might do better slowly incorporating this incline in, which is totally fine. Again, it's just another piece of your body that you're learning about through the steady state cardio that you can use for not only this workout, but other workouts too. Nice deep breath. And if you need it, don't forget, water's there, right? You've got this. Team, we have a little under 10 minutes to go and you're absolutely crushing it. We're so close. And doesn't it feel good? I feel incredible. Okay, back to heart health just a little bit. So I just wanna quickly mention that the work that you do here is really important. But if you really wanna take care of your body, you should also be throwing in strength and flexibility a few days a week. Because think about this, as we get older, our muscles start to deteriorate and lose strength. The only way that we can combat that is by doing strength training and flexibility and mobility work will keep your muscles able to move through those positions properly. And that's really important because if we don't focus on those two things, we lose that strength and we start to lose the ability and the mobility to do this important work here that's happening on our treadmill as we age. So maybe you've already started to feel those changes. I know I have, and I'm only 29. Like a few weeks ago, I couldn't open a pickle jar and it was like the end of my world. Like I was like, oh my gosh, my body is changing. <laughs> but you guys have probably noticed it, I'm sure. I'm not the only one. It's a natural process that happens with age. So if you've been starting to notice that, take note, definitely take note, but then act, right? So as a part of this series, I'm gonna be sharing some other workouts with you guys, a HIIT workout if you are interested in adding that vigorous intensity in, and a strength workout. Both are super important, so I really encourage you guys to check them out. Even if it's something that you've never done before, the work that you do there is gonna help you here. And it's gonna help you with the rest of your life too. So, just a shameless plug. How are we doing? Give me a little smile, a wave. Are you still there? As long as you are, I'm happy, we're good. Keep breathing into it. You've got this. 
If you're wondering if you can make it through the rest of this workout, maybe take it down a tone. Decrease the incline a little bit. Otherwise, we've got about six minutes to go. You can do this. I know you can. How are we doing? I'm feeling pretty good. Like, I feel like I've learned from this workout that I can talk during my steady state cardio. It's not something that I do often, but it feels pretty good. It kind of reminds me of going on a hike with one of my friends. Like, you and I were on this little hike together right now. I really like to do that when I catch up with my friends. Like, instead of going out to dinner or something like that, I'll ask a friend if they wanna like, just go on a hike. I feel like for some reason, when I move my body, I feel so much more open and it's so much easier to talk and catch up. It's kind of fun. If you want like a fun way to get your steady state cardio in, I would recommend it. Check out the trails around. You can always get a coffee or dinner after, but it's fun. <sighs> Only five minutes to go. We've got this, crushing it. And I personally am excited to get one of my cardio workouts checked off for this week. <sighs> okay team, let's talk a little bit about what happens after this workout. We kind of already talked about HIIT training, strength training, flexibility stretching, why that's super important for your body. But I also want you to keep in mind overall recovery. Right? So when we are putting this time in on our treadmill, on our mat, through any workouts, keep in mind, it's a privilege to work out, right? Not everybody gets to do this or move this way. And when we take on that privilege, we also take on the responsibility of taking care of our bodies. So when you get off of this treadmill, I hope that you will focus on hydrating, you'll focus on getting a nutritious meal, fueling your body with what it needs, and really giving yourself the time and the space to recover, right? Because our bodies are precious. We only get one. And if this is something that you wanna be doing regularly and committing to being healthier, that's all a part of the game. So I encourage you to think about those things. Even your self-care is super important, right? How you're showing up for yourself. Think about it a little bit. Just a little tip of mine. It's something I've been trying to get better at. I've always been really good at working out, but I've never been that good at taking care of myself outside of this space. And it's extremely important and it makes a huge difference. All right, how are we doing? Three minutes to go. Team, this is when your form should be crumbling. Don't let it crumble. We've got this. It's only three minutes. Lock it in, commit to it, and be intentional with every single step. This is right about the point where I'm missing my Taylor Swift. <laughs> but you know what? I survived. I survived 27 and a half minutes without my Taylor Swift. And I feel like something, there's something to be said about that. I'm proud. Tomorrow, you'll catch me back on my treadmill rocking out to my Taylor Swift. I'm gonna know every single word by the time I go to that concert. I can promise you that. last two minutes, take this time to connect back in with your breath, connect with your body, and see how you're feeling, and take notes for next time, right? Because if this is something that you're doing five out of seven days of the week, 
It's something that's gonna need to adjust over time too, right? Like the speed in the incline that you pick today, you might be there for a few days, a few weeks, maybe a month or two. But at some point, you're gonna need to kick it up to get in that same heart rate zone. So I encourage you towards the end of every single session here, tune into your body, see how you're feeling and take notes so that you can adjust the next time that you come back to your treadmill. That's the only way we're gonna get better team. It's really just you taking that time to connect with your body. And you guys did an amazing job today. I'm so proud. <sighs> 30 more seconds to go. Come on, let's make it the best 30 seconds. If you wanna get a little strut in on the treadmill, cause you're super proud that you finished this. I'm good with it. Go ahead. You're at home. Maybe you wanna dance it out. Go for it. This is a celebration. 10 seconds and we're gonna bring our treadmill to a lower incline, hopefully an incline of zero, if you're cool with that. And we're gonna bring the speed down as well. Go for it. Take it down, baby. Nothing is better, right, than just like taking all of that speed and incline off the treadmill at the end of a workout. We're gonna slowly walk. Just give yourself like 30 seconds to slow down your heart rate and adjust to this pace a little bit. And then when you're ready, we're gonna bring our treadmill to a stop. Beautiful. Now, a quick stretch just to get you started, but I really encourage you guys to continue stretching on your own after this workout is over. You're gonna bring your right ankle up to your left knee. You can take your safety clip off if you need. And stretch out your upper body and slightly bend your left knee as well. You should be feeling this stretch through the right glute and also through your upper body if you are able to get into this position. Nice deep breath. Switch it out. Oh, the stretch is so good. And very last thing, we're gonna stretch out our calves. So go ahead and come over to the side and you're gonna pop your left heel off the back of that tread. Feel that nice stretch in the back of your leg, your calves. They are going to feel that work from today. If you have not been doing incline tread work, it requires some serious strength from your calves, so expect them to be sore and give them a little more love. Let's switch it up. Nice deep breath. Let yourself relax a little deeper. Ouch. <laughs> okay, awesome job, you guys. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm so glad that you did. I hope you learned a little bit about working out for heart health. It is so powerful, not just for your heart, but for your overall body. And I hope to see you on your treadmill soon.